Hello. I hope you are doing very, very, very... <laughs> I have an appointment written on my hand. I forgot about that. <laughs> very, 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 very well. Actually, let's just do soft spoken since there's rain dripping all over the place. Anyway, I was going to do a roof video again because I already shot one and I'm not sure if I'm going to post it or not, but it's raining quite a lot. So that's not happening today. I should just post it. I don't know. All I have today with me are mores because this was an impromptu video and I for, yeah I forgot my uh, tripod too which is why you're lower than usual but I figured you don't complain so you would just you'll be fine with it but I have that I do have a new one so if I smoke more than that, it's fine. And then I have my trusty ashtray, which is always up here. So practically couldn't be more prepared. So I broke the elevator, <laughs> which isn't funny. I'm gonna have to pay to fix it but it was pretty stupid because it, I know it leaks oil. It does, and so it has to be refilled every couple of months, but it hasn't been refilled lately. And when it started moving, it was kind of jerky, jerkier than usual, and I should have stopped it, but I was like, eh, let's see, let's see what happens. And so uh, it got halfway up the floor, and seized up. I mean, needing to get an elevator person out here anyway to fix the leaking issue. So now they can just fix the working issue too. Not good. But, um, wow. Um, yeah, so it has these two, I showed you before in a different video a while ago. Um, it has these two wooden, like, old school, like, cage doors that come down. One on the elevator itself, and one on each floor. So when you go in, you have to close the floor's gate and the elevator gate. And so when it got stuck halfway up the floor, um, I could open the elevator gate but I couldn't open the floor gate because you can't open the floor gate once the elevator has changed anywhere than being right at the floor. Turn of the 1900s, last, would be last century, that would be 2000. Turn of the 1900 century, safety feature. So, I'm stuck halfway up the other. The elevator's stuck halfway up the floor. And these are tall ceilings. They're like 20 foot ceilings. And so I have the elevator gate up, but the gate to the first floor will not budge. So I had to climb the gate to the first floor and then drop down like 10 feet. Uh, it was fun. And I was like, <laughs> on the top of the gate for a minute like being like I'm either gonna break my ankle or, or it's gonna be fine and it was fine so it was an adventure and I don't know why I didn't just take the stairs probably because I'm a lazy asshole but the lights were off in the stairs and I didn't have a flashlight so I was like I mean I have my phone but that drains the battery so fast and I knew I was gonna be doing this video uh, for a while but I took the stairs. Now everyone has to take the stairs. Because Lindsay's a dumbass. So, that happened. It's 
quite the adventure to get to the roof. It's like a 20 foot ladder to the to a hatch over there. And of course, it's like the ricketiest ladder in the world that's been here since the roof has been leaking. Uh, and it's like deteriorating. So maybe that the rain is a sign that I, and the elevator is a sign that I, it is good I'm not on the roof right now. Might have dumped. Died for a video. What would my tombstone be? My sister and I always, I've mentioned this before, we always play this game. It's like our tombstone, which whoever of us, whichever of us dies first, has to make their tombstone, the other sister's tombstone, whatever, kill uh, that sister. Mine might be cigarettes. <laughs> um, but mine, I guess, if I died for a video, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be for what I died for, like if it would just be like my phone, like what I make to film the videos, or if it would be the elevator. If the elevator killed me or the ladder, the ladder killed me, or the whole building if I fell off the roof. Hers is always going to be like whatever kills her and a fountain, like a like a forever fountain, like a, one of those like eternal flames, only it's going to have Prosecco. So they're always going to be like winos and hobos around her grave. And I'm gonna have to constantly be filling it with Prosecco, which is carbonated, which will bring its whole, maybe the fountain can like aerate it. I haven't had to figure it out yet because she's still alive but the time will come but sometimes if I do something stupid and feel like I could have died it's fun to think about what my tombstone would have be because be, a lot of times it's like something that would have crushed me sometimes with my toddler just be a little statue of her if she kills me I don't know. It'll be interesting. But that was those were the adventures of the warehouse today. No wind, so I can attempt a French inhale. I don't know why I never noticed this before, but I found all these little black, uh, like drippings, and they break. And uh, they're kind of like the consistency of coal, like coal. Um, I was gonna say old school coal that you used to get delivered to your house, but you know what coal is. It's getting dark. Um, and then I realized they must be from when they would retard the roof and they must have dripped through some cracks. I had a lot, I have a lot of coal less in my yard because there was a old like chicken coop slash outhouse slash coal storage building in the back of the house I currently live in that I had to tear down when I bought the house um, because it's been totally renovated now but um, when I bought it it had to be a construction loan because the house needs so much work it needs a new HVAC system and it just it needed all kinds of things so you can't get a normal mortgage on a house like that um, it wasn't like 
condemned. It was empty. There had been someone living in it like three years prior, I think, three years. But I love, it still had such good bones and a lot of original woodwork. Um, but one of the things that had to happen for the house to be mortgageable was the back, that back half building that was falling apart had to be torn down so did that and had a giant fire um but it had like this bench inside that had like toilet hole size holes in it like two of them next to each other so either it was like a very public outhouse in that like you could go to the bathroom at the same time as someone else Uh, I think that's what it was because if it was a if it were if it had been a chicken coop <clears throat> the holes wouldn't have been like that if those had been nesting boxes the holes would not have been that big they the chickens would have fallen through it so it must have been an outhouse and it was very old so it must have been before they put bathrooms in the house but the house was built in the deed said 1917 but it was probably older and uh, that's just when the deed was made for it because I found older newspapers in it. So unless someone sat on a newspaper for 20 years, then the house is older than that, like shoved in the walls. So not as insulation, just I don't really know why they were shoved in there. I think those were from like, okay, not 20 years, like 1903, so. So I found like the old red clay marble, old postcard sent to my address. So that was neat. Um, and in, in this uh, house I had to, outhouse thing, I had to tear down. There were two army men, like old, I think they're lead army men. It was really cool. It was hefty. I should show you guys sometime. Anyway, there was a bunch of coal in this, in it, the outhouse, and there was like a separate room off to, like a, off to the side. It was a decently sized building, and it had a big pile of coal um, because the fireplaces in my house are coal fireplaces. And I guess that's where they used to get it delivered to. The house I lived in before this one was built in 1937. And it had a coal chute in the basement with a coal, um, like a, like a concrete room, like fitted in the back corner where they used to get coal deliveries, but it was, you know, all board covered up and stuff. And the driveway had covered the hole on the outside. But kind of burn some of the coal. Actually, I guess coal doesn't have an expiration date. It's just old. I mean, it's already thousands of years old, millions probably, but burn some of it outside and then like random bomb bonfires would add a chunk of coal to it, but that's been there a very long time. Yeah, my house had an, had an outhouse when I bought it. I had two bathrooms too. They just never teared. teared. They never tore down that that shed that was like cleaning. It had a metal roof, but I burned every all the rest of it, which was fun. And, you know, in like probably three or four installments of burning giant fires before I even moved into the house, which probably made the neighbors nervous that. It set the precedent because I have fires almost every night outside. So now they're in a fire pit and not like just giant piles of old wood, but with probably lead paint. I'm sure lead paint on them. So the cigarettes don't kill me. Stuff I've burned definitely will. I will have a smoke related death.
I did get my tetanus shot though several years ago, so at least all the rust I've touched and that won't probably be what killed me, maybe. smoking I wonder why especially with the ceilings being so high it's just like a, a haze there's a window right there obviously window but it was kind of way too bright to have any shot lovely bullet holes though I wanted to tell you. Train. We can never get away from trains, can we? Actually, the railroad track here is right there on the other side of that wall so it's even closer than the train in my house i just moved places and got even closer to the tracks moved locations i don't live here that would be a problem Someone asked if I had to train myself to do nose exhales. I, did, I didn't. I actually started, when I very first started smoking, all I did were nose exhales. And I had to actually like train myself to do something other than that. I don't know why. blowing smoke away with smoke. Trains communicating to each other with their horn. I think the dripping is kind of ASMR friendly, so hopefully you don't mind it. Oh, I decided what my smoking, I mean, I guess if you're a patron, not patron, it doesn't matter, but I am happy that I de uh, decided what my smoking patron video is gonna be this month. It's going to be reviewing like my top favorite boots, boots. And uh, just 
I mean, I guess it's going to be leather and smoking. It seems like smoking people don't mind leather, but leather people don't really like, for the most part, don't like smoking. So the smoking video this month is going to be both. And if you, just shameless self-promotion, if you subscribe to the smoking level of Patreon, you get the leather video and the other video. You get like all the tiers below it video every month too. You don't have to like subscribe to smoking and leather and get to get both videos. That would be, that would be too much. So I got um, my dog Noodles that I had to put down last month. I got his ashes back and I've been looking for an urn to put him in because I'm deranged. And if you, if you saw my, my pug figurine video, you'll see, you saw the like urn that I have my other pug Dolan in his ashes. It was a, it was a tobacco urn, like a tobacco jar, but pug shaped. So I thought that was very fitting. Ooh. Um, but I don't, I didn't really have anything like that for noodles. So I went on Etsy and found like, the exact same pug urn that I have Dolan in, but it's antique. And I spent $20 on the one that I had already, the Dolan's in, but the one that uh, is on Etsy right now is like 300. So no. Um, so I messaged the lady today and asked her if she would take less. So hopefully she will answer me. To not tell her what I wanted it for. I didn't want her to feel like I was just trying to get pity. For, and I also didn't want her to think I was insane. So I'll just tell you guys about it. You already think I'm crazy, so it's fine. So maybe I'll have two matching urns with two of my dead dogs in them soon. So that'll be exciting. started I guess the vet like I got Dolan the first one cremated and the vet was like you want the ashes back right and I was like yes because that's what it seemed like I was supposed to answer and then I got them back and I was like what am I supposed to do with these why did I get these back and then I was like well I have this pug shaped thing you know jar and so I'll just put them in there. And so I did. And now it feels like if I do anything else for noodles, it won't be as respectful. So now this is a thing that I started and I still have two pugs and they're gonna get older and they're gonna die. And how many pugs am I gonna have to put in jars? <laughs> this is just a snowball effect. And it's weird. Because I don't know how many of these antique pug urns I'm going to be able to find. Because there was only one on Etsy. It's good that the other two pugs are very young. 
I won't have to deal with this for a long time. And maybe by the time I need another pugger and there will be another one on Etsy. And maybe I will have come to my senses by then and stopped collecting pug ashes. But we'll see. Bright, <laughs> of bright things to look forward to in the future. <laughs> I do. It's a lot of times I'm like, eh, I'll figure it out when it happens. I can't think about everything at all at once, which I try to do far too often. Sometimes you just have to trust that your future self will handle it well and then just push it out of your mind, which I'm getting better at doing. I probably have way too much faith in my future self. She's awesome. She's gonna, she'll know. All of my mores in that carton had this slip in them. A federal court has ordered R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Philip Morris USA, Elatra, and Lenard. Leonard, nope. Lornard, I don't know. You can see that. To make this statement about the health effects of secondhand smoke. Oh, there's more wording on the other side. Goody. At least one side of it's that awesome retro package. I hope Moore's never changed their packaging because I like it. Local wildlife. Rain to people outside. It's about as wild of wildlife as you get in the city. talking about the people yelling at each other outside. Just in case the cam the headphones not picking it up. Pretty sure my vet thinks that I have no soul at all. I'm sorry to keep talking about my dog. I'm gonna put my dog down. It's like therapy. You're like therapy, and we're such close friends that you just have to listen to her. Um, whenever he called to tell me what was wrong, because I'd had to, times being what they are, I had had to drop noodles off at the vet for them to take a look at him and they said that he had a collapsing trachea and the vet said that like I could take him to a specialist but that it is extremely unpleasant for the dog and usually can't be fixed so I didn't really want to put noodles through that and he was already like at least 16 probably 17 I'm not sure because he was already old when I got him he was like 13 ish when I got him um and so I was like yeah I, I was kind of prepared for this because it did not sound good he was like hacking and coughing all the time and it sounded worse than kennel cough does so because one of my dogs got kennel cough at the kennel once and 
So I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess the putting him down would be the best option. But I didn't even, like, I didn't ask to be there or anything because I didn't want, like, the... Because they had been coming out to the car with masks on and stuff. And I, my vet is, like, so nice and really, obviously, likes dogs, likes animals. Um, and particularly likes pugs because he has had pugs. And I didn't want him to have to tell me that I couldn't, like, go in when they were, you know, like, be with Noodles when they were euthanizing him. So I didn't even ask. But I feel like he was prepared for, my vet was prepared for me to ask. I feel like he probably would have felt obligated to let me go in, even though they probably wouldn't have wanted me to go in. So I just, I was just, I don't know, not casual about it, but I'm sure I sounded casual about it because he sounded kind of taken aback whenever I was like, yeah, that's probably the best solution. Bye. <laughs> like, I, did, I just didn't want to put him on the spot, but I guess I should have went through the words to sound more caring. I did care a lot. I just, when a dog's that old, you just ex kind of expect it when something bad happens with their health. He was already having problems walking and stuff. I mean, it was, it was time. And now my vet thinks I'm a monster. I had that vet for a long time. I remember I got, my parents got my sister and I each a cat. Who knows why, but I'm sorry, I'm not a cat person. Um, whenever we were five and we took them in, that, that was the same vet from whenever I was five that I still go to. have a whole nother pack. I worked at a vet's office for a little while whenever I was much younger and it's just seeing the inner workings of a vet are it's interesting. I'm like, I don't know, the lady who worked at the front desk and was like the vet assistant, I don't know, she was below the vet, but she was above me, obviously, and not just because she had worked there a long time, but she was a very interesting lady, and she, she felt like if you weren't like talking baby talk to the customers, that you were being rude like she, like grown ass men like a 50 year old man would come in she'd be like hi how are you doing today and like her voice would change that's not how she normally talked but like if you didn't do that too to the customers like she would get upset and I did a good job I mean like I was personable I was fine I and then you know I would make small talk with people which I love and you know but it was part of the job so I did um but I just could never bring myself to do the baby talk thing and that just drove her crazy about me which is one of the reasons I left because I just <laughs> I can't do that I don't even think people liked being talked spoken to that way 
It was just interesting how people interact with each other. Sorry, so much, so much pet talk. I need to retrain myself how to do the French in here. like I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I can. It's like I need to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Probably do it on accident perfectly. It's usually how, usually how it goes. I think that the people who work here, obviously not on this floor because the ceiling's like leaking, but on the first floor, um, probably think I'm crazy because when I come here to make a video, I just like, I don't even really, I don't talk. I just come straight upstairs and they just know to leave me alone. I'm on the third floor to be as far away from them as possible so we can't hear them talking. I love the rain. Especially at night, it's so cozy. I love thunderstorms. Like just loud, wake you up, middle of the night thunderstorms. I love it. And how fresh everything smells afterward. Or like when you're on a road trip and you drive through thunderstorms, I like that a lot too. Thunderstorms in the south in the spring can get so violent and I just, I really like them.
Yeah, I thought you today though. Okay, let's do one more, more, call it a day. I hope you don't mind. I don't like to do stories constantly. I sometimes just like to chill out and smoke. Not every moment has to be killed with words. Especially not between us. probably know me extremely well because I think I'm getting close to 200 videos, which is a lot. I should probably check that. It makes sense. I upload every like two or three days. I can only make smoke rings if I like do that guy because I can't, I can't do, I can't blow them. I wish I could. developing, okay? I love hunting around the warehouse and before I came up here, I was looking in some very dark rooms on the first floor that don't have windows and I found these two, I think they're slate, but they might be blue, blue stone. Uh, like tabletops. I guess they were tabletops. They're really, really neat, and I'm going to have to find some way to use them in my house. Maybe for plants inside. I don't know. I like, I like foraging things from the warehouse. I remember what I was going to tell you. I re I don't think I really forgot about this story. I think I've just repressed it. It probably happened, how old am I? Man, it probably happened 15, 15 years ago, whenever I was in college, maybe the very beginning of college. Yeah, I was young and stupid. And I uh, went to this person's house that I had met at the art library because I worked at the art library in college. I loved that job. And um, 
he, it was a guy, there was no romantic interest whatsoever. I just found him extremely interesting. And he didn't go to the art school. He just came to the art library sometimes. And I played a show with my band and he came. I think he was, he was friends with some of my friends. And then I think I wouldn't have just gone to his house alone, but I think like other people were going to come or like he needed a ride. I don't remember. I wouldn't have just gone to this guy's house alone, but he invited me in and it was like, it was weird because he was probably five years older than me at the time. And it was, it was the time in my life where I, it was probably the closest to thinking that I was going to get murdered. And I think I have suppressed this story because I was actually really scared. And I went in his house and, or his apartment, it was, it was in one of the old Victorian houses in old Louisville, which is right next to the University of Louisville's campus. And so like all the, he wasn't a college student, but all the college students and everyone really in my age group lived lived in that to actually what is there and so I went in mostly just because I like to look at people's houses and I was curious and it was like a hoarder's house and I just started talking to him I, I had never learned what his job was and he said that he works with at a shelter downtown Louisville um, with homeless people and which is cool and he was he started like raving about like it wasn't just talking it was raving about how you know if he were homeless he would go and he wouldn't live downtown he would live he would live in the woods in like a tent because that would be more comfortable to like I guess you know bushcraft it like be a wilderness person would be easier and more enjoyable than being a homeless person which I in the city which I agree that would be better um but evidently like in all of his free time he would dumpster dive and so his apartment was just filled with um it wasn't trash it was just I guess things like treasures that he had found in dumpsters and a lot of it was actually really neat. It was, he had like a lot of just ever, a lot of people's artwork. Like I guess he dumpster dived at the university and like specifically the art school's trash. And he would pull drawings and stuff out and just like plastered his walls with them. But the way he was like raving and I don't think I had told anywhere in one where remembering yeah i don't think i told anyone where i was going i think i was giving him a ride home <laughs> and i just remember sitting there thinking that i might die and that no one knows where i am and i just i haven't heard somebody talk the way that he was talking very many times in my life it really was raving but the story isn't really that interesting now that I say it out loud, but it was, it was scary. And I like totally played along. I mean, I was genuinely interested, especially in the art on the walls, but like, I just had to like agree with everything that he was saying. And it was also like some like anti-society just raving about how people throw away very valuable things and I agree and you know they don't people live with much more than they need I agree but not to the point where you know some some people take it much more extreme than I personally do and you know have very purposefully limited possessions and like it's one thing to be a minimalist it's another thing to like be a, what do they call those? I think he was also like one of those people that 
scavenged like food from dumpsters, like grocery store dumpsters and stuff, which was, was very interesting to talk to someone like that, but he just got very into it and it, I just, you know, had to agree and like not show that I was uncomfortable at all and just be like, oh yeah, of like of course I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna hang out again. I never talked to him again. Um, but I just, just totally went with all of it because it seemed like he definitely had screws, several screws loose. Um, his name was Benjamin. I don't know why I remember that. I don't remember anyone's name ever, but I remember that. But yeah, hearing about how messed up society is, just being raved at with all this, like everything in his apartment had been pulled from dumpsters, which was cool, but it was like, some of it was like totally without discretion, like broken radios, he had a broken fridge that was like open, but he was using it as shelves. Like talking about how he was gonna fix stuff and it was, it was scary. Not really what he was saying, but how he was saying it. I didn't die. I lived to tell the tale. I would guess that working with people who don't have very much day in and day out. And also, I think that it is common for homeless people to also have mental issues sometimes. I know not all of them, but some of them. Maybe being around that and all the like struggle and despair day in and day out kind of knocked more of his screws loose. I know there have been plenty of things I've done that have been more reckless and dumber than that, but that's probably the most my back ever went up in a situation. But I got out of there as quickly as I could. And I never gave him a ride again. I never really talked to him again. besides the whole pack I have sitting here. So, thank you for hanging out with me, Ben. I appreciate you. I, doing pretty, I'm doing pretty well. And I hope you are too. It's not too cold here today. Just rainy. Let's see. This week. This 
The weekend's Mother's Day. It's basically the weekend already. This ring is made out of a, I don't know if you can see it, US Liberty coin. My American ring. Though if I ever go overseas, I might say I'm from Canada. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Part of me feels like that'd be a betrayal of my Americanness, but the other part of me feels like it might be safer. I'm gonna go home and sit on the front porch and watch the rain, smoke some more, and just hang out, play some solitaire on my phone, which I've been doing too, too much, a weird amount. And yeah, I appreciate you. I hope you're doing well in these interesting times. Seems like things are getting better though. I hope you're doing well. And I will see you next time. Bye.